Hello. Today I would like to show you how you could create a so-called hyperbolic tiling on the Poincaré disk, which is a circle like this. And based on the algorithm shown in this website called Non-Euclidean Geometry, uh, with the section called Interactive Hyperbolic Tiling and the Poincaré disk. So <clears throat> basically you have two parameters. One is called P, which is the number of side of the polygon for each polygon. So as you can see, you have for this green one, you have four sides, and this one is well, four sides, this one is well, four sides. And another parameter is Q, which is the number of adjacent polygons on each vertices. So in this, if you look at this vertices, you have one, two, three, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, six polygons. So that's when the Q is equal to six. So if you change the number of uh, size of the polygon, which is P to seven, you have seven sides, which is heptagon. And if you change the Q to like three, then you have a heptagon, so-called heptagonal tiling, a famous heptagonal tiling, which you have heptagon with the adjacent polygons to three. And in this example, in this web application, you can change the position of the polygons and change the size of the changes this angle of each the specified polygon and based on the angle and the position of the uh, one polygon the other polygon will follow it but the size of each polygon is different it will become bigger when it, be when it goes to center of the point carrier disk and it goes smaller and smaller and just disappears or it becomes pretty uh, becomes too small for us to see if, it, uh, if it's close to the edge of the circle. So that that is the tiling that we want to that I want to show you how you can implement it, how you can draw it on in Houdini. And if you look at this page, you could see some algorithm how you could exact how you could actually draw it in Houdini. And actually, there are some missing information because uh, this website is using a application called GeoGebra, which I don't know much about. So it took a while, takes a bit of time to translate it into Houdini's language, especially for Vex. But I think I have. Uh, managed to do it so I would like to share how you can use it <clears throat> so uh, before I get it into a algorithm uh, before I get it into how to implement it actually implement it in Houdini let me explain a bit about algorithm uh, explained in here so first of all you have P and Q which I have explained uh, before the P is a number of size of each polygon and Q is the number of adjacent geometry, adjacent polygons on each vertices. And in Euclidean tiling, in Euclidean uh, space where all the geometry, all the tiling pattern have the same size compared to the one in hyperbolic tiling, which everything has different sizes. <coughs> In Euclidean spaces, you can have you can actually have only three variations of tiling, which is when the p is equals to p three and q equals to six, which is equal to a triangular um, tiling, which looks like this. So you have three sides, and on the on each vertices you have six adjacent uh, polygons and another type is p equals to four and q equals to four which is similar to a grid tiling so you have square polygon for each uh, you have four side which is pretty much similar to a square or rectangular shape and for each vertices you have four adjacent polygon so this is like a square grid and another one is p equals to six and q equals to three which is equals to a heptagonal or i mean a hexagonal tiling 
like this. And in this case, on hexagonal tiling, you have only three polygon adjacent to each vertices. So in this vertices, you have three polygons. In this vertices, you have three polygons. So this is uh, equals to a heptagonal tiling. That's the Euclidean space uh, tiling pattern variations. So you only have, actually, you only have three tiling patterns. And the other tiling pattern you see looks like diff looks different, but it all shares one of this specifications p equals to uh, 3 q equals to 6 or p equals to 4 q equals to 4 or p equals to 6 and q equals to 3 so even if the tiling seems irre irregular any tiling should meet with these one of these uh, specifications or uh, uh, parameter <coughs> but in hyperbolic geometry, this is not the case because the main principle in hyperbolic geometry, if you, the total sum of the side of the triangle is not 180 degrees. So if you have angle two, angle one, angle two, and angle three, the angle, the sum of the angle is always less than 180 degrees. But on the other hand, in Euclid, Euclidean geometry, the sum of the side of the triangles is always equals to pi. So this rule here is making the restriction of the number of variations of tiling here. But since in hyperbolic geometry, you, <clears throat> the sum of the angles is less than 180 degrees which makes it possible to create infinite number of variations of tiling so if the P and Q meets with a equations P minus 2 times Q minus 2 which is larger than 4 then if P and Q meets with this equations then you could have any kind of tiling variations which is explained here on the website so that's the interesting part you could have in Euclidean or in hyperbolic geometry hyperbolic space you could have as much as many variations as possible so you have more you have more variety of ways to express the tiling pattern Keep that in mind. Uh, in order to, I'm gonna explain how exactly you could start to draw this tiling pattern on a Poincaré disk. Where it's one of the model of hyperbolic geometry. Now, <clears throat> in Poincaré disk, everything is drawn inside a unit circle. Unit circle means a circle with the radius of one. And <clears throat> Well, I said that you could have as many variations as possible. You could have as many variations of P and Q. You can change you can change P and Q to create an infinite number of variations for tiling. But based on those P and Q, the the radius of each polygon is fixed based on what you're gonna do, what you're gonna draw. So. <clears throat> There are a mathematical equations in order to define the radius of each polygon and which is explained in this website as well. Again, in this case, it is called D. D equals to square root, blah, 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 written it here. So if you, you can, based on the number of value of P and Q, you can calculate the value of D which is the radius of polygon and <clears throat> we can start from uh, join it and this value D is the radius value from the center of this circle so you always start from the center of the circle and you have you can define the D and based on how many sides you have if you have five sides one two three Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. 
first of all you draw a you plot a point inside the unit circle with the distance of D for as a radius. So each one has the distance D with the angle of divided by 5. The 2 pi divided by P. Now, <clears throat> by doing it, you can get five points as a starter, as a base point. Two, three, four, five, so okay, this is six. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. This is center. Now, <clears throat> after you get the, the base point of the polygon, you might want to just connect those points with a straight line. But in hyperbolic geometry, uh, you don't use line in order to create uh, orthogonal lines. But when it when you say line in hyperbolic space, it actually is an arc like this. So you have to draw an arc uh, to make the side of the polygon. So in order to create an arc you have to do some uh, transform Mobius transformation in order to define the center of this arc and the radius of this arc. So you have to define where the center is for this arc and the part so that you can define the part of the arc. Now, in order to find out the circle information for each arc, each edge of the polygon. What you can do is to use a transformation called Mobius inverse transformation. So when you have a point like this, based on a center point and a circle with the information of radius, you can do a transformation, uh, inverse transformation. So for this point, using those cir this circle as an inverse axis, you can plot the point outside the unit circle. So this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here. So it jumps to the other edge of the circle, other side of the circle. Now this inverse transformation is not just like a mirror, which in Euclid space, if you have a triangle like this, the mirror is pretty s straightforward based on the axis line. You just flip the geometry like this. But in a hyperbolic space, the axis, the axis is actually look like an arc. So in this case, the inverse geometry is actually looking like this. And there are more details about it in the website in this in this section inversion and circle so I would prefer you to check this out if you want to know more about mathematical terms why it happens I'm not going to explain why it is so <clears throat> I'm just gonna uh, so in this case I'm gonna just gonna use the Mobius inverse transformation function in order to uh, flip this points into the outside like this now <clears throat> When you want to know the arc which connects this points and this points, what I want to know is the circle, right? Uh, which connects this point and this points. Now, the, when you do it an inversion transformation, this points and this points, actually the circle also go through these points as well. So actually the circle looks like this. So, as long as you know at least three points, which is on the circle, you can get the center points and the radius of the circle, which creates, which is <coughs> the base of this arc. So, in order to get the circle, you either need this point or this point's inverse points. Then you have three points to get a circle, and you already have 
the angle here so you can cut out this circle to this arc as a part and you do the same for other edges of the polygon other side of the polygon like this and the base step is now over you have a polygon on the center now the next step is pretty simple now you have this uh, circle on each edge which you used it which you could have created as a base of the arc and each of them have center points obviously as a circle and using the circle you do another inversion for whole whole polygon so you want to inverse transformate transformation you want to do the inverse transformation for all these points all these geometry which goes from here which is outside of the circle to inside of the circle so it becomes like something like this so if you inverse transformation if you do the inverse transformation for this polygon based on the circle the polygon goes to this way and do the same for this circle the polygon goes this way this one goes this way this one goes this way and this one goes this way and interestingly each inverse transformed geometry also has an arc for each side and also have the circle base circle again and based on those circle you do again the inversion for this polygon this polygon so doing this infinitely doing this recursively you can actually create a tiling like this pretty easily so what you really need to know is the equations how to do a Mobius transformation which is pretty easy and I'll show you when writing in Houdini okay so that's the main uh, that's the basic principle how you can draw a Mobius uh, how you can draw a hyperbolic tiling another thing another options in order to add some uh, stuff for this tiling drawing is that actually if you look at this samples and the and the web app you can see that the the center of the polygon is not always on the center of this unit disk so this is the case that I used <coughs> in order to draw in order to in order to explain how you can draw the geometry in order to draw the hyperbolic tiling but actually you could also move the center of the first polygon outside the center of the unit disk like this so <coughs> in order to achieve this it's it will become more trickier uh, than before uh, because in this case you cannot directly use the value d because in the center if the polygon starts from the center the the radius for each vertices from the center point is always the same but if it, if it goes outside then you don't know where the center is first of all and the diameter the radius is also different from the center to each vertices so you cannot directly use this value d here so how you could do that and this is the trickier part because it really doesn't show much information how you could do that here so <laughs> let me explain in a sketch how I have managed to do that okay <laughs> so say you have this Poincaré disk circle and you have this geometry which you want to start with so you have six sides here and right now it's pretty easy to start from the center point uh, of the circle, unit circle, because you can define each point position by calculating the distance d, which is calculated from the center of the circle to each point uh, on 
which creates the polygon, which constructs the polygon. And the, the distance d is always the same if you create the polygon from the center. But if you move this, if you want to move this initial polygon to somewhere else other than the center point inside a Poincaré disk, such as this point, let's say this is a b point b. Now, now from here, uh, you might just want to translate this polygon direct directly to here, but actually you cannot do that because as I said before, I think I said before, the size of the polygon is bigger on if the center point is close to the center of this unit circle, but when it moves to the edge of the circle, the size of the polygon becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So actually the polygon will be drawn something like this, much smaller than that you see on the center of the circle and also this distance d from the center point of the polygon will vary for each point it becomes different for each vertices from the center of the polygon so you cannot directly use um, this value d when the center point of the polygon is outside out of this center of the unit circle. So in order to transform, translate this um, initial polygon to anywhere else inside a Poincaré disk, you need to have a thing called a bisector line, which is drawn like this. So the bisector line is a in middle um, line in this case in inside a hyperbolic space so this is called line but it, uh, if you look at it from the euclidean space this is actually an arc so you you need to have this bisector line inside a poincare disk in order to transform this into here at this position by using a mobius transformation so this will be the the guide circle in order to use to transform this to the other side of the circle which is around here using inversion transformation now in order to get this um, bisector line or a bisector arc what you need to have is a hyperbolic circle for which connects this D and I mean the center point as well as the <coughs> this B point so in order to do that first of all you have this um, point or center point O and you also have a point B right now what you need to do first is to calculate the inversion position, inverse position of this B based on this unit circle. So it's in, it'll be around here. Right. And you need to create two circles in order to create a bisector line like this. Now, one circle is pretty simple, starting from O as a center, and which go through point B. So one circle is like this, which which have the center of O, same as the unit circle, but the radius is from O to B, so something like this. Another circle that you want to create is First, you have this B and inversion B. Make a line between it and detect a midpoint somewhere around here called M. And from using this M as a center point, create a circle that goes through O, something like this. Now, now that you have two circles like this, you have intersected points on here and here. Now, 
by well, let's like the new one so you have O and B and now you now have you got intersected point one intersected point two now <clears throat> next uh, you also you have to have a hyperbolic line that connects P1 and P2 in order to create that the easiest way is to again inversion transform either P1 or P2 using the circle unit circle so if you want to inversion transform P1 then maybe the P3 comes from comes around here which is an inversion transform of the, this P1 position now that you have one, one, two, three points. You can create a circle that connects all three, and that circle creates a bisector arc here. And this bisector arc can be used to as a guide to uh, inverse transform this initial polygon into a B position from O. So that's how it works. Now after that, after you have transformed this polygon to a B position, from from here you can uh, calculate, as I explained before, you can from these from the each arc of the polygon, you have the guide. Uh, guide circle like this and so based on the circle you can uh, inverse transform this polygon again and again recursively to fill in the circle to create a tiling so that's how it works and that's what we're gonna write up in Houdini to actually create a tiling like this. So I'm gonna start from making geometry node and let's start by creating a base polygon. Let's uh, create a attribute wrangle and let's call this base polygon. And gonna change this to detail, open up the script editor and to just make this simple because there is going to be a lot of coding I'm going to do a copy paste for each functions that I'm going to use the first the first function that I'm going to use is the Mobius inversion transformation so returns vector 2 and input vector 2 as a center of the circle and the radi uh, radius of the circle and then the point that you want to transform the point that you want to do the inverse transformation and return the inverse points so <clears throat> this is the function in order to do a Mobius inversion inverse transformation and let's also have two uh, utility function which converts vector 3 to vector 2 by ignoring the y value and also converting the vector 2 value to vector 3 by setting y value as 0 now also let's create a function in order to create a circle information which is center point position and the radius of the circle from three set of points so you have point A, point B and point C and you want to have an output as a circle center point and the circle radius as rad so this is the algorithm, this is the mathematical equations in order to retrieve the center points and the radius of the circle from three points A, B, C. Okay, now let's also create a function to get intersected points of two circles, call it circle intersection. So you have circle one, uh, center circle 2 center circle 1 radius circle 2 radius as an input so you have four inputs and 
as an output you get two intersected points p1 and p2 so this is another equation this is another algorithm in order to retrieve intersection point i got these algorithm from some website mathematical website explaining how you could get it so i just copy paste it so i don't really know what's really going on here <coughs> it just works okay now another kind of functions that we're gonna need is first a a hyperbolic based function so in hyperbolic uh, spaces you need some special functions in order to calculate like distances intersections or join circles because it's a bit different from euclidean space because the line is drawn as arc so based on those uh, ideas you have to do some special calculations now in this case i need to have a function in order to uh, get this circle in order to create a bisector arc which i explained it here in the sketch so i, I need to create this two circle so let me just copy paste this function which i call it hyperbolic circle this hip circle so you have uh, vector A uh, works as the center point of the circle and then the B uh, which will be another point that you want to create a um, hyperbolic circle which goes through the edge of the circle go through this B and this O sen and O rad is the the O sen will be the the O sen will be the radius of the newly created circle and the O rad is the newly created circle's radius. Okay. And there are some conditions when a equal to zero and y equal to zero meaning if this a is if the a is in the center of the unit circle or not based on those differences the position of the center of the newly created circle and the radius will be different okay now having those functions uh, let's create some parameters first first you have p as the number of sides of the polygon so I'll call it I'll use CHI and also Q and let's have it let's promote those parameters here P and Q let's make it as 7 and 3 for initial value here right now <clears throat> um, also let me also make some parameter called rot ang which will use it as the rotation of rotation angle for whole geometry for whole tiling and also let's create some information to off the center po position of the initial polygon so First of all, let's create a parameter called B distance, which is the distance from the center point of the point B. And also a angle of the B position. I'll call it B rotate angle. And finally, get the position of the B point B which will be the center point of the initial polygon by first of all setting the radius then after that doing some rotation using matrix 
to rotate this matrix with the radians of rotation angle with the y-axis and rotate this point using these this matrix rotation matrix now <clears throat> after that uh, first you create a center point vector 2 and radius and you let's use the hype hyper circle function that we made here in order to uh, create two circles so this will be the one circle starting from the a b d b position x and b position z b position z <coughs> since this is x and y and center point will be the input b here so I'm, I'm actually trying to create this circle on the sketch okay and the output value will be the center position and this and the radius of the circle All right so this is one circle that, that I'm gonna get I would like to get another circle which is this one in order to create the intersection so I'll call it descend and rot drad and use high hip circle set 0 0 for input a and set b pos dot x b pos dot z as a second input and as an output you get center position and the radius of the circle let's check if i have got no errors seems okay so now I got two circles what I want to get is the intersected points so I should get two points intersected point one and intersected point two I'm gonna use the function that I made called in circle intersection so one C sen is the center of the one circle D sen is another center of the circle C rad and D rad is this radius of those two circles and as an output you get the intersection point one and intersection point two right now <coughs> now if you've got a IP inter two intersection point you want to get you want to draw a bisector arc and in order to create a bisector arc, what you need to do is to f first uh, transform either IP1 or IP2 using Mobius transformation, Mobius inversion transformation. So what you can do is to vector 2 inverse IP equal to Mobius, tra Mobius inverse and use the unit circle to inverse. So the center position of the unit circle is 0, 0 and the uh, unit circle's radius is 1 and you want to inverse transform IP1. Now you get IP1, IP2 and invert IP3 points so you can use those 3 points to draw a circle. So in order to get the circle information you need to have some variables, inverted center, inverted radius and also a center of the maybe I don't need those so you need to have the center of the newly created circle and the radius of the circle and use circle three points to get the circle information from IP1, IP2, and an invert IP. As an output, you get center and the radius. Okay, let's check if I got no errors. Okay, to get the errors. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now I got the bisector arc information. 
by having a center position of the circle and the radius. Next, I'm going to create a base polygon information, this one, which is on the center of the unit circle. So, let's create, let's first create a, a empty array here in order to store the position of the points and also to store the position of points on the inverted position positions now we have we are going to create a th this number of size of the polygon so in this case p so let's do a loop goes from 0 to p and create a point position using vector 2 now <coughs> uh, before doing it what we need to have is the radius of the polygon which is D explained it in this website this one so based on those algorithm I'm gonna I'm gonna just copy this and create a float value D as the radius of the polygon which is on the center of the unit circle so I need to replace this pi with dollar pi this one is also dollar pi dollar pi dollar pi Pi. Okay, let's check. Supply. Nope. Okay, I need to semicolon. I need to have semicolon. Okay, I think I still still missing something. Uh, let's see what it says. Okay, I miss. I need to write something here. So now I have the value here. Oh, it's in order to create a each point position using D it's pretty simple uh, I'm gonna use the trigonometry to set the position so D times cosine 2 times pi divided by P times I plus radians rot ang to rotate whole things together that's x and for the y d times sine uh, 2 times pi and divided by oops divided by p times i plus radians rot ang Right, so that's the position of the polygons, point, vertis, vertex, now <coughs> let's check uh, if the B distance which is This one here is not equal to zero because if it's equal to zero then we don't really need to move the center point because it's on the center if it's not zero then we have to move it so we're gonna <coughs> inverse invert the this point uh, position no I mean point position of the center point of the circle and you recreated circle which is the bisect which creates the bisector arc bisector line that's uh, is on the middle of O and B point B so I'm gonna do the Mobius Mobius inverse IPO IP red 
also use those IP and IP red, which is the part of the which is the information of the vice sector arc, vice sector line on the hyperbolic space. I'm gonna move this position, inverse this position point. Okay. Now, <clears throat> after that, I am also going to create a inverse point of this position based on the unit circle. So center position is 0, 0, radius is 1, and set the position. <clears throat> now, now I have uh, two information, position and inverse position. For the position, I'm gonna set this inside this position array for the inverse I'm gonna set this into I positions array right line check okay no errors that's good now after you have uh, done this for loop you have if the P is 7 you have 7 points stored in positions and 7 inverted points stored in I positions now let's do another for loop in this case in here we're gonna look into all the points and positions and retrieve three points in order to create a circle from three points so one is position one which comes from positions at i index and one is position 2 which is the position next to this point so I'm gonna do use the i plus 1 and if it goes more than the length of the array then I'm gonna use the modular to go back to 0 then I have another vec uh, position which is stored inside the inverted position gonna just get i. Could also be i plus 1 but either way is fine. Now <clears throat> in order to get the radius and the center point position I'm gonna create a uh, variable first as a o and red then use circle three points plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and as an output you get center point and the radius okay all right now now you have the center circle I mean the circle which creates the sides a uh, side or the edge of the polygon well this still is just a circle information but you want to have you actually want to have an arc information so in order to get the arc uh, information you need to get retrieve the angle of this edge so actually for the polygon if you have a polygon like this for this edge if you want to have this edge what you want to do what you want to have is this the angle of this edge and angle of this uh, line based on the x axis so it could be like this one and also for this edge you want to have another angle then based on those angles the information you can cut or trim this circle to retrieve this arc so <clears throat> what you can do is to calculate a tangent of a the first line and the second line so I'm gonna use the a tend a tend two function for that purpose so for the tangent one I'm gonna use a function a tend two and pos one dot y minus o dot y and pos one dot x minus o dot x plus pi 
times 2 so that I don't get any negative values and modular using pi times 2 so that I don't get more than 360 degrees or pi times 2 and another one 8 and 2 I'm just gonna let me just copy these and just change this position to 2 right and in order to repeat the angle 1 and angle 2 from this tangent information I'm gonna have to create some condition here if tangent 1 is larger than tangent 2 then angle 1 becomes tangent 2 angle 2 becomes tangent 1 else if not angle 1 is tangent 1 and angle 2 is tangent 2 now this is not yet done the real angle will be it will be a the difference of these two angles so let's subdivide it by subdivide angle 2 by angle 1 because angle 2 is always bigger in this case but if the angle is larger than pi then change subdivide this angle by 2 times pi so this will be the final angle value for the arc now let's actually create this arc using polyline so add prim using polyline make it out primitive as in polyline then set some attribute here so we can use it later on first of all set prim add triv uh, for the center of the circle for this in order to create this edge arc so watch will be ox and oy also let's set the radius of this arc and let's also set an ID which we are going to use this also later on in order to remove the duplicate ones and so on I'm gonna name it zero in string okay now also let's set the name for this primitive as well to uniquely recognize what this uh, <coughs> value is what this arc is I'm gonna just use I and convert it into string okay now <coughs> let's enough with the attributes let's actually create a vertices in order to create an arc so I'm gonna set the resolution of the arc so I'm gonna I'm just gonna use 10 points to create an arc and use for loop using this resolution and get the angle here in order to create the point position so angle 1 plus angle actual angle of the, the side and divide it by resolution minus 1 times i no times n so this will be the angle uh, of the point position and in order to actually calculate the point position using this angle you use another trigonometry so starting from OX plus the radius times cosine and ang all the y plus radius times sine and ang Okay, so that's the vector 2. Let's create, actually create the point from this information. So add point, <coughs> set a pos dot x, 
0 a post dot y now you let's use this point as a vertex for this primitive arc use our add vertex arc apt and finally let's set the point group for this newly created points name is as trans okay apply it and see if i got any errors and i do undefined ang2 okay should be this one should be ang2 okay now <coughs> i seem to get the polygon here now let's close this and let's see how what's going to be changed by changing the parameters and let's first promote some parameters I have P, Q, rotate angle, B distance and B rotate angle so the rotate angle, by changing the rotate angle let's first set some ranges for each parameters so for the rotate angle I'm gonna set the rate ranges from 0 to 180 B distance to 0 to 1 is fine the B rotate angle maybe 0 to 360 maybe this is should be also 360 now if I change the rotate angle the whole polygon will rotate based on this angle by changing the B distance you can change the center position of the B point the new new center point of the base polygon to that goes uh, this distance away from the center points to a x direction but if you don't want on the x direction you can also rotate the direction by using this, this b rotate angle so combining this b rotate angle b distance and rotate angle for rotating the polygon itself you can actually just move this polygon to any way you want for the initial polygon initial polygon this. and if you set the B distance to 0 it will become on the center and the radius of this polygon which is will become always D in this case which is shown in this website alright now by changing the parameter P and Q if it if it if <coughs> if it satisfies the equations this one P minus 2 times Q minus 2 is larger than 4 then you can create as many variations as possible but if you make it too small for P and Q then nothing shows up because it doesn't meet up with this uh, <coughs> uh, restrictions or equations so I'm gonna continue with P equal Q and P equal 7 and Q equal to 3 since the out output will be pretty interesting which is gonna be heptagonal tiling okay all right so that's the initial uh, setup that you need to do next uh, from from now on it's gonna be much easier or maybe not but this is kind of a um, a key point key place once you have this initial polygon it will be much easier I think it's just a matter of the optimization how light you can create for other tiling now in my way I'm gonna make first create a group and name this extend so meaning I'm going to extend only the group only the geometry which have in a group called extend so without those extend group I don't want to uh, do any Mobius transformation to copy to expand okay okay let's also create a detail attribute another detail attribute let's attribute triangle and I'm gonna name this guide point and <clears throat> uh, 
for this guide point um, in this guide point uh, detail wrangle I'm gonna create a center point of this polygon using the average position of these uh, verti vertex position so I have those number of points which creates this polygon and I just want to have the center point position the average center point position of these points and I'm gonna use that guide points in order to uh, remove any duplicated polygon which might going to be created while doing the expansion of the tiling so it's just gonna be a guide whether the polygon if there's any duplicated polygon or not so first of all let's create a s average position vector as a guide and count and I'm gonna look at each primitive using for loop and primitives and for each primitive I'm gonna get the point list and for each point again make a full loop and retrieve that point ID or point number and get the point position of, of each point and at this point position to the average position then also count up and finally after going out of the loop I'll divide this average position using the float count then I get I should get the center point position by using this calculation now after that I'm gonna actually create a point using add point function at this average position and set point add driv to set the ID based on the primitive ID in this case I only have one primitive I have one polygon which is same as zero so I'm just gonna manually set set it as zero and also set point attribute to create another attribute called guide or not the attribute but send point group I'm gonna set this point as a guide and also set point group, another group as extend okay and I should have one point here which works as a guide point if I look at the inspector and look at the guide and I should have okay seems I got many points here okay did I set it to detail no nope. I should set it to detail okay I'll go back and yeah I should have one just one guide point here no that's fine okay now, now next will be the fun part so recursively I'm going to expand this polygon to actually create a tiling inside the Poincaré disk so I guess there's two ways to do it one is to use the solver to um, dynamically expand the tiling or just use the for loop to recursively create the tiling in this case I don't need any dynamic or animation so I'm going to use a for loop so <clears throat> in this case uh, I need to I think I need to set how many recursive how many iterations I want to have for the for iteration for the recursive calculation so I'm gonna just use a for each number here so that I can set the number of iterations here 
and let's connect that first and before going over I am going to make a null node with the name of controller to have all the parameter that I can control maybe I can also have a parameter like these five parameters here so let's create that too <coughs> So first I have P, maybe the minimum could be 3 and the maximum could be any value, could be infinitely large but I'll just limit to 10 and for the Q, the minimum also 3 and the maximum I'll set it to 10 as well. Right. Now, rotation angle, I'll set it to, I'll set the range from 0 to 360 degrees, another one, B distance, B distance, which is from 0 to 1, and B rot, rotation angle, B rotation angle, which is also from 0 to 360 degrees. Now, <clears throat> I want to have the new parameter that I want to have is the iterations. And I'll set the range from 1 to maybe 6, if it's maybe 10. But if it's too big, the calculation will going to be too really heavy. So let's try not to go beyond 5 or something. So I'll set the speed to 7, Q to 3, right angle, some net random values, distance also random values, rotation as well, iterations, let's start from 3. Okay, so let's copy this parameter, go back to the basic polygon, paste it here, do the same for Q, let's rename this, oops, and this one as well. was rot angle and this one B distance this one B rotate all right And let's also copy the iterations by right clicking it, copy parameter, and paste it here. By right clicking it, paste it. Okay, let's save this file so that I don't lose any process. I'll save it to desktop. Okay. Okay. Now let's also set this gather method up for for each loop to feedback each iterations and for the for each begin set it to fetch feedback so that I can use it as a recursive loop. Alright, and what I'm gonna do now is to first uh, let's use the point wrangle and let's remove some group that I'm that I don't need in this case which is uh, when we have a guide point if it has extend group set to this point guide point then set point group remove it by setting it to zero
now for the other part what I would like to do is to get only the guide points so set the group to guide points and delete non-selected which I should get a point but seems I'm not getting anything let's check the geometry spreadsheet point so I have guide here I have one guide here okay so I have one guide point being extracted using this delete node and I'll name this as pack okay now next next one is the most important stuff which is to actually expand the polygon so in order to do that I'm gonna create a, another wrangle uh, in this case I'm gonna use a bit uh, special wrangle here which is a doesn't have it here so I'm gonna just create a attribute wrangle and connect this one to the first input the pack to the second input and change the run over to a numbers and by how many um, <coughs> loop that I'm gonna do or how many operations that I'm gonna do is based on the point point number which is stored inside a pack so in this case I only have one point so to here I'm gonna set endpoints number of points inside a pack so in this case just one but by continuing the calculation recursively this number will just increase Okay, and I'll name this extent. Okay, so inside the script, what I'm gonna do is actually how is actually to do a expansion of the polygon. And in this case, I explain it in sketch. If I have a polygon like this, which is a bit off from the center, you do a inversion inverse transformation <coughs> you do inverse transformation from each uh, center of the arc so for this arc you have center point somewhere around here and the radius of some r and based on this circle if you do an inverse transformation for this whole polygon you get something like this for this circle, if you do it, you get something like this. And do the same for other one. Then you have one set of tiling pattern. And that's one loop. After after one loop, on the next iterations for each new edges, you do the same things. So for each edges you have a new circle here as a guide. So you can use that to um, <coughs> expand it using Mobius transformation to create another set of polygon. By continuing this, you can just fill in, fill up the circle, unit circle, with this tiling pattern. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so. Let's open up the code editor and first of all I need to have a same function called Mobius transformation or Mobius inverse so I'm just going to copy paste the code and make some conditions in point group if the point if the guide point comes from the second input have an extend then get the ID of this point point. 
and get the correspondent primitive numbers which have which shares the same ID value from the first input using find at trivial value function so from the primitive look for the ID attribute if you have the same attribute then get the number uh, array of primitives and using for loop to go through all the primitives which is found as the same ID which shares the same ID get the ID uh, prim number center position at the primitive numbers and radius which is stored in the primitive and get the center position of the polygon so in order to Uh, check if it's at the in order to create a new guide point for a newly created uh, polygon, expanded polygon. Okay, so this is just a pre initial value. I'm gonna update those va various variables and let's do another for loop. Which go look through all the primitives again. And if the primitive it has a <coughs> group called extend. then get the prim id also a point list which shares inside this primitive using prim points and after that create a new polygon as a polyline which will be a inverted polygon in order to calculate the inverted position of the current polygon I'm gonna have to look all through this point So I get the position on the current polygon's point and do the inversion using obvious inversion transformation, obvious inverse from the center point of the polygon arc radius and actually what I want to move is this end pause and then pause the okay apply and now I got the inverse point position I'm gonna actually create it as a point set mp.x 
0mp.y and add it to a polygon, empty polygon as a new point. And at the same time, in order to calculate the guided point, I'm gonna add this new inverted point position to average position and count up to one. Right now, <clears throat> after creating the polygon polyline, let's set the primitive attribute with new ID. With the current ID plus I to A T. Set prim attrib to set the name as well. Poly this one just T. Okay. <laughs> set apply. Okay, something is wrong here. Somewhere, okay, need one more parenthesis. Okay. Now, another vector that I wanna have is the center of this, uh, <clears throat> the current polygon, the current primitive. So, and some pause, gives prim center. And, I also want to do the Mobius inverse transformation for this primitive. So, Mobius inverse set at p dot x at p dot z as a center of the circle to use for Mobius inverse transformation and p scale for the radius and set send pause x and send pause dot z right now <coughs> uh, also get the radius from the primitive and set prim attrib radius of the newly new polygon to the same radius from the current primitive and set prim attrib center of the new polygon be the inverted position of the center and set prim group extend of the newly grid polygon to be one because from the newly grid polygon you want to expand on the next from next time all right now go out of the loop and ever in pause divided by the number of average count which makes the average position of the newly created polygon let's visualize it using add point And let's uh, let's set some attributes and groups for this one. So first ID same thing as before, same thing as primitive and group as guide and set point group zero extend have a pt1 and finally set prim group 0 extend to current primitive to 0 so because you already you already have extended from this primitive now apply and another error where is it somewhere around here okay okay i need a comma Okay, another one. Um, okay, this should be float. Huh. Okay, do I have another errors here? K. 
Okay, this should be Ave. Wait, what was it? Ave, Average, Print Boss, Average. Okay. Now accept. Now, um. By doing this, I think I should be getting some newly created primitive, but I don't see it. I think, okay, I do see it now. <clears throat> so from the first polygon, I have just created one loop of polygon here, which is great for the first step. Now, next I want to recursively create it from the newly created polygon to the other to outside to fill in the circle so in order to do that I need to set some uh, groups I guess but let's change this to see okay and now it doesn't seem to change anything so let me check at the spreadsheet and let's check out check out the point primitive the guide i have some guide here to what extent do you have some extent here okay <coughs> that pack here okay Alright, um, next one, I'm gonna use the split to split the points with guide or not. For the guide points, I just want to have a points which have the guide group so to make it sure just gonna say it guide which I don't think it will make any changes here but it's okay now <coughs> I'm gonna use the fuse so that any duplicated guide points will be fused or uh, combined together For the snap distance, I'm gonna set it to something like 0.01. If it if I make it too small, then sometimes the created polygon will have some gaps in between. So I'll just stick with this, and also let's set the output position to least point number. Okay. Now for the other parameters, I don't think I need to change anything. Now, for the next one, let's create a point wrangle. I mean a primitive wrangle. Primitive wrangle to remove the duplicate geometry based on this fuse point. So connect it to the second input and this will be pretty simple so uh, let's get the ID ID from the primitive and let's find a value find a triv val from the second input from the point with the same ID if you could not find the ID then which means it has been deleted because it has duplicates so just remove this primitive like this All right now after this combine this point of guide and the primitive together and fade it back. Alrighty. 
Now, this should be it. But it doesn't seem to create more than one loop, so I think I'm missing something. Uh, let me check. Okay, I realize I did some spell mistake here. This is not element, this is lm num. Alright, now it works. Now if I go back to here, changing the iterations, I can see that from from first polygon, initial polygon, expand to one, two, three, four, and so on, filling up the gap inside the circle. One color circle. And that's pretty much it. If I change the rotation angle for the initial polygon or the distance of the initial polygon for the center, also rotating it. Changing the primitive, primitive uh, iterations. Yeah, it seems to be working all right, working correctly. Now, to make it more prettier, let's make it as a surface. Right now, it's just a polyline, so like let's make it like a closed surface and then finish this up. First of all. I don't need a guide point anymore, so let's delete the guide points. And in order to create a closed poly line, a poly to make it as a polygon, I need to. Um, the easiest way is to use a node like Polypath. So, in order to do, in order to use that, I am going to use the another for loop for loop by a value of id so I'll use for each named primitive <coughs> and I'll use id as a piece attribute and let's connect that so that I can get each polygon with the same id which co creates whole one polygon each polygon so, in order to make a closed polygon out of this line, uh, gotta use fuse first and do uh, use the polypass, which makes primitive just one. Connect all the lines and make primitive node with closed straight which closes up the curve as one polygon and finally let's calculate the area of this polygon so that I can use it for in order to colorize each face based on the area do the same for every polygon now the I can see that the the normal direction for each primitive is being inverted into inverted it inverted at some point. So the center it look the normal direction is facing down. The second created expanded polygon facing up and so on. So to make everything facing up, I'm gonna make a little script here using vex primitive wrangle and it's just gonna be a simple one using dot product so dot facing up with the normal direction and if the dot is negative then set frame group reverse and do the reverse node for every group which has reverse group so reverse now everything is facing up with the correct normal direction 
What I'm gonna do now is to make an attribute promote to get the maximum value of the area for every primitive from every primitive. So I'm gonna name it max area, keep the original from primitive to detail area. Let's check the detail. Okay, I got the maximum area here. Now let's create some new attribute for colors using primitive wrangle. So let's first retrieve the maximum area from the detail attribute, which I named it max area. And the color value, I'll use fit value to translate, transform this area value from 0 to max area to 0 to 1.0. And then uh, store this value to color attributes. Or and finally, let's create a color node. Color this value based on the primitive attribute named color. And maybe I can change it a bit more colorful here. a bit doesn't seems a bit too linear um, let's check the attribute promote oh yeah I have to change this to maximum well uh, this looks better okay now this is done so by changing the parameter like angle distance I can now freely move the center polygon I can also change the P and Q to create various types of tiling this is interesting yeah such that's it that's pretty much it how you can create a tiling hyperbolic tiling using Houdini